Blessed be all my people out there. In this video, we are going to be uh, tacking on to the uh, ongoing astrological analysis of current events with a focus a bit on the U.S. political situation, uh, following up with more of that ripple effect exploration with regards to the Mars-Uranus conjunction we talked about in mid-July. Now, in the last video, we talked about the uh, Trump assassination attempt, and we went in and we analyzed the astrology of the day. And we also had yesterday Joe Biden announcing that he was not going to continue his candidacy for a second term as president of the United States and endorsed Kamala Harris instead. And so what we're going to do is very much like with the Trump assassination attempt, we are going to be looking at the astrology of the circumstances, not only surrounding the announcement that Joe Biden made, but also looking at what is going on with Kamala Harris and her chart with regards to all of this developing. And just like with the Trump assassination attempt video, I have been making it a point to shut down all conversations that have been trying to come to me about the circumstances uh, because I don't want to come into this with any kind of preconceptions. I do not want to be going into this with any kind of contamination of whatever ast astrological uh, information is coming through, right? So contamination could be emotional attachments to a particular candidate, confirmation digging, narrative attachment, things like that. We don't want to do that when we're doing any kind of astrological reading or any kind of tarot reading because that's doing it wrong. We want to look and see just what these things are telling us, and that's how we get accurate, but also indifferent, neutral, dispassionate, but clear interpretations. Very much like the Trump video, we are also going to be kind of talking about what's going on with the planets and how this shows up even for what we could call more ordinary people because i don't normally do readings and for political situations or for celebrities or famous people or anything like that i don't like what it attracts we're going to do this old school and so let's get started with just that and of course if you ever want to get a personal reading with me you can always go on ahead to my website integrativemysticism.com so let's get down to business and see what is going on with the joe biden announcing he is not going to continue his run for a second term as president of the United States. And so what we're going to do first here is we are going to load up a by wheel, just like we did with the last one. And for those of you that are not familiar, a uh, by wheel is basically two astrological wheels in one. And what we do with that is we look at the person in question and the day of the announcement or the day things were set in motion in a big way. And then we look and see uh, how they are interacting with one another. So we've got uh, Joe Biden's birth chart info here in the top left under uh, the little blue indicator of birth chart. So 20th of November, 1942, 8.30 a.m. in Scranton, Pennsylvania. And for those of you who are curious, I work with the Tropical Placidus system, Western astrology. For those of you who ask, a lot of people have started asking. And on the that's going to be indicated with the inner ring here. So the inner ring and all the celestial bodies and whatnot that are highlighted in blue, this is Joe Biden's chart, what was going on when he was born. So we have him here as a son in late Scorpio with a rising or ascendant early Sagittarius, and we have his moon at zero degrees, almost one degree, Taurus. And then on the outer wheel here, we have the date of the announcement itself. So 21st of July, 2024. And I just left it as uh, 12 noon, Washington, DC. Timing is not crucial with when it comes to this particular reading, because um, you know, it's not really clear as to when this decision actually went into action. It's like, all right, this announcement happened on the 21st of July, but this decision could have been made the day before, the morning before, whatever. And so we don't know when this was really kicked off exactly. 
And there's a lot of hearsay and conjecture, but again, I've been shutting a lot of that down because I don't want to look at anything but the astrology when we're looking at this kind of thing. So we're going to start with first looking at what kicked off this whole little mini series of, uh, you know, analyses that I've been doing that Mars Uranus conjunction. And so back in mid July, when that occurred, you know, I said that there was going to be some big shakeups going on uh, between mid July and the end of August. We are still very much in that window period. Uh, at the time of me recording this video, which is why I always tell people do not get attached to key calendar dates and things like that, because you're, you're going to be kind of not seeing the full picture when it comes to how astrology works. But also, I did announce in that video that two big shakeups would be going on, maybe more with regards to both the Republican and Democratic parties uh, in the United States. And so we then had almost immediately after the Trump assassination attempt, and now this. And so Looking at Mars and Uranus, though, in his chart, both of them are still very much uh, at the time of July 21st, conjunct and active in his sixth house of work, reputation, schedule, life organization, lifestyle, and health. And so clearly we see a disruption and something reaching a, a bit of a boiling point, right? A big shakeup with these two coming together, ending a pattern, ending a normal, ending something that could be considered an institution in his life. In this case, his job. But this could also, I feel very strongly because the sixth house does rule health, Mars Uranus conjunct in the sixth house of health can indicate also um, something getting, you know, taken to uh, a greater level of impact as it relates to either a health concern or a lifestyle concern. And sometimes this can show up for ordinary people as things like accidents, uh, but we can also see this as uh, complications that are unpredicted, complications coming out of nowhere. And so I do think to an extent, because both of these two are here in the sixth house, it's kind of running the spectrum here. We do have the health side of it as a big part of it, but I'm also curious with Mars and Uranus together here, if there was maybe also some other uh, work at play. Mars is the ruler of his fifth house, for instance, of romance, relationships, and his, rela uh, and his connections with his kids, parenthood. And Uranus is the ruler of his third house, of communications, contracts, as well as his network and even collaborations. And so I feel like there was perhaps a big conflict of interest that was going on with a part of his inner circle as well that could have maybe elongated this process of deciding to stay or go. And while I've been avoiding looking at any of the news or even letting people go too much into talking to me about this this last you know day or so because I, I don't like to get front-loaded information, I said it in my last video, I don't let my clients just go on and on and tell me their life story because I'm, I'm not there to be your active listener. I want to do a reading. The, the big thing, though, I would say with this is that... Um, Immediately, I'm kind of wondering if he had loyalties to many different people in his inner circle and all were competing for his, uh, his commitment to their plan. The reason I'm, I'm curious about that is, is that similarly to Trump's reading, we have a Venus opposition going on. Uh, Mars is opposite his Venus. Uranus is opposite his Venus. Uh, at the time of this uh, this last weekend. And whenever we have Venus oppositions, we have challenges around loyalty. Who do we connect to? Who do we serve? Who do we trust? Who do we bond with? Who do we want to be close to? And all of that. In Trump's chart, it was Venus opposite Pluto, which indicated a major betrayal. Uh, and in Biden's chart, we've got Mars opposite his Venus, which is not so much a betrayal, but it is about competing loyalties, competing agendas. And I'm looking at Mars opposite Venus, and I'm kind of like, okay, well, could there have been 
um, a point where maybe to a certain extent, Biden was not sure if he wanted to stay in as long as he did. Yes, on the news in over the course of the last month, it looks like he did. But I'm curious if some of that could have been a part of another conversation. Now, Uranus opposite his Venus is also indicating here that this um, this quit, this dropping out could have also been an act of rebellion in a sense uh, against a loyalty. So not necessarily a betrayal, but making a decision uh, that would be choosing one clear loyalty and rebelling against another loyalty. And that's only further compounded in this with uh, Venus also being the ruler of his sixth house of reputation and life organization and uh, his 11th house of friendships and his support system. So I'm kind of feeling like this has been a debate or an argument within his inner circle for some time. And looking at this, I'm, I, you can't really tell what a person wants with astrology and what, you know, what their free will is dictating. That's why I like to do astrology and tarot. You can't really get that deep into somebody's head. You can really just look for patterns and you can look for events and you can look for tones. But with this, I can't really tell just all by itself what exactly was on Biden's mind. And I'll be frank, I don't know if Biden knew what was on his own mind, um, because we also have Uranus and Mars in this conjunction square his Chiron, which is in his ninth house, which does rule, yes, politics. It does rule official matters but it can also rule our higher thinking, our, our cognition, and anything relating to um, big contracts, big plans, and mental processes. And I'm not saying that to be insulting or judgmental. Um, I've seen this kind of square happen with lots of people, lots of clients, uh, where it's, it's a weakness, which is what Chiron is at the end of the day. It is a weakness in us that we all have a Chiron somewhere. We all have Chiron somewhere in our charts. It's the weakness point, um, the, the, the wound or the complication that works against us as we go through life. A lot of New Agers like to call it the wounded healer. I think that created a lot more toxicity than good, but it's, it's the wound, it's the weakness. Um, so there's a weak point that also is getting highlighted here. And I feel that whatever he is, I think he's rebel he has rebelled against what was trying to make him stay in or pressure him to stay in, which could be a number of different things. It could be the people in his inner circle that maybe wanted something out of it. Could have been his own uh, family, his son, his wife, maybe some, you know, uh, that kind of loyalty was really invested in him staying in. Um, and yet at the same time, the other half of his inner circle is like, get out. So if this could be a situation where it's like half the board wants you in, half the board wants you out. The wife wants you to keep the job, the son wants you to not. That's what seems to be playing out in terms of this debate, this pressure, this push, this push, this push. And so I think it hit a powder keg. Um, a lot of conflicting energies have been going on in Joe Biden's chart for some time. Uh, ever since Mars got into Taurus a little while ago, uh, he, it's, you know, going back into, you know, even before we got into July, it's been creating oppositions like crazy, Mars opposite his Mars, Mars opposite his Mercury, Mars opposite his Sun, and now Mars opposite his Venus. And so uh, a lot of loyalties, a lot of connections, uh, you know, get have to get kind of hit, you know, and, and sorted through during that kind of period. And people go through these things often enough. Um, normally a person wouldn't go through Mars opposite their Mars, Mercury, Sun, and Venus all in one go. Mars normally doesn't hit the inner circle or the inner planets in rapid succession like that because typically uh, they're a little bit more spread out in the chart. But, you know, all of us usually go through Mars opposite our Mars once every two years. Mars opposite our Venus once every two years. 
Mars opposite our sun once every two years, Mars opposite our, you know, whatever, all, once every two years. Uh, but this was all happening all in rapid succession over the course of June and July. Another thing that I found interesting about this was the fact that the announcement came on the day of our full moon in Capricorn, which in Joe Biden's chart was his second house of income, employment, and security. And so typically, when there is a full moon in a person's second house, there is a transition, there is a stage change, there is a culmination, um, the wrapping up of something, the completion of something, and a, a big page turn that goes on in a person's life. Uh, sometimes people will change roles, change projects, close up an account, or quit their jobs, depending on what's going on, or there may be some environmental shift going on in the workplace that is forcing them to adapt to a lane change or a different road. So it's very much in sync with what's going on with the astrology. But it's the second full moon we've had in Capricorn this year. We had another one back in June, which would have fallen on the cusp of his first and second houses. And so I feel like there has been maybe um, something going on where he almost or could have left or made this announcement or almost maybe did, possibly, uh, back in June. But this experience has been somewhat elongated. And that brings me to uh, my third and final observation for this particular matter. That full moon that we just had in Capricorn fell on top of Pluto retrograde and also formed a really strong trine connection to both Mars and Uranus. So whenever we have a major power, like a full moon, connect to Pluto or Pluto retrograde, it is amplified in its effect. And this is not just something happening to Joe Biden, right? We're looking at the, at the outer wheel here. So this full moon conjunct Pluto retrograde happened for everybody. Joe Biden, his family, you, your neighbor, me, my neighbors, everybody. But what happens with this kind of combo, because Pluto is retrograde, is that it brings about overdue endings. And that's one of the overdue transition is, uh, is a big part of Pluto retrograde, right? What needs to end that has been elongated or kept going on uh, beyond any kind of serviceable good or what is just time to come to an end. And so full moon on top of Pluto retrograde in his second house makes perfect sense for why uh, this is sort of, if he wasn't going to, to leave or quit in June, yeah, leaving and quitting, you know, now, you know, it's probably getting extra emphasized. Um, you know, there was probably a do or die kind of feel as we went through uh, this last week, weekend. And, this again, this is a really powerful, uh, it's not just turning a page when it's a full moon uh, conjunct Pluto retrograde. It's, it's more like closing a book and opening up a new one. I've, I've done readings for people where it's like, yeah, you finally quit your job or you finally move or you finally leave the, the dead relationship or you finally do this. You finally um, go no contact with somebody or you finally move on from something that you've been idling in you know this is a you're not allowed to repeat history and no it's not going to allow anyone to finish what they started and that full moon trine to mars and to uranus at the same time in his sixth house again forcing um both a rebellion against an old plan <clears throat> or perhaps um, a, you know, a conflict between loyalties, pressure, and also forcing him to pay attention to his own capacities and capabilities at the same time. It's indicating here, again, history is not allowed to repeat, right? Not for him, not for you, not for your neighbor, not for me, not for Trump, not for nobody. And that nothing is going to get, nobody's getting to finish what they started with the full moon on top of Pluto retrograde. It's, that's just what it is. 
And so with that, that looks to be the end of that story with regards to Joe Biden and his dropping out and his stepping down, no longer pursuing a second term as president. So let's take a look real quick and see what is going on with Kamala Harris and the potential for her is should she take this endorsement and run with it. So once again, the inner wheel is Kamala Harris's chart and we've got her info here in the top left corner, 20th of October, 1964 in Oakland, California at 9.28 p.m. And then of course we've got July 21st, 2024, the day of the announcement on the outside, the outer ring here. Um, and we can see what is exactly going on with her and how it stacks up with her chart. And so here she is, sun in late Libra with a rising uh, late Gemini, ascendant late Gemini, and her moon at t running up towards the end of uh, Aries there. So we're going to, of course, just like we did with Biden and Trump, start off with talking about Mars and Uranus, what they've been doing since and during their conjunction with her. So Mars and Uranus conjunct occurred in what would be her 12th house of the past, private matters, hidden opportunities, secrets, shortcuts, and old business. And so when we have uh, Mars and Uranus conjunct in the 12th house, typically this shows up for a person where there is a big revelation, a big reveal, and could be even, yes, um, a shortcut opening up, some kind of handoff, or some kind of um, passing of a torch, which is exactly what happened uh, when you look at the endorsement there. But with Mars conjunct Uranus, it tends to get more personal than just what could be going on with our jobs. And so I'm curious if there may be more going on in Kamala Harris's life outside of the realm of office or the potential for office uh, that could be affecting her or affecting the situation or will show up to affect the situation in some way. Um, we also have Mars being the ruler of her uh, 11th, I'm sorry, the ruler of her 11th house. Uh, and this is not really the career sector of a person's chart. This is talking more about one support system and community. And so I'm kind of wondering if it's possible Kamala um, was not 100% aware of what was going on with regards to Biden and his circumstances. This almost looks like a surprise, um, almost like this came out of nowhere for her. And Uranus ruling her ninth house, which can talk about political affairs, official matters, official dealings. Again, all of this seems to be coming out of hiding with and for her. And, you know, it can kind of catch a person really uh, sort of off guard. I'm not sure how in the know she was. You can't see how in the know uh, a person is, again, because you can't really see what's going on inside everybody's head. But this does, you know, look like a surprise moment. And I'm feeling like this could also be indicative of, I, I'm wondering if, if it's unclear how, uh, how clear it is that, she, you know, her path could be if she did want to do this. Uh, sometimes this does indicate, you know, sort of a Charlie and the Chocolate Factory golden ticket kind of moment. I've seen this actually serve some people quite well. But yeah, I've also seen it go the other way. One of the things that I am keenly aware of right out the gate is that Uranus is on top of her Jupiter. And Mars is also in uh, a square to her Saturn. So there is this clash that is occurring uh, where I feel like it's possible with uh, 
Uranus on top of her Jupiter, again, this is actually really good fortune as far as most people are concerned. This is usually surprise wins, happy ac accidents and things like that. But Mars square one Saturn is usually uh, something where, you know, a person almost feels like they are getting um, pushed or, or, or they are getting uh, given something or, or they're, they're, they're getting handed on something that is uh, more than they want, more than they desire, not something that they want to be uh, responsible for or accountable for. I feel like what's going to happen is we might see, just by the looks of this, um, some mixed messages maybe from Kamala, not really a huge certainty as to whether or not she's going to fully commit. Um, you know, I've seen people with Mars square Saturn during important conversations where you know, they kind of choose to turn down, maybe in a more conventional or, or more everyday way, uh, they turn down a job, they turn down an offer, they turn down a promotion opportunity, they turn down a transfer, uh, because it's, it's not going in the career direction that they want. There is also Mercury square her moon at the time, I'm sorry, Mercury trine her moon, not square, trine her moon at the time of uh, this, uh, this announcement. And Mercury, being the ruler of her fourth house of home and family and um, living arrangements, as well as the ruler of her and Gemini, I'm kind of feeling like there could have been something else going on, uh, something that maybe she was kind of she she might be dealing with sort of a conflict of two opportunities i'm i'm wondering if maybe this is something that uh was unplanned and now she's kind of wrestling with okay do i want to go with my uh non presidential career plan or do i want to take this thing um cuz this just kind of happened you know that's that's what i'm looking at and i'll be honest when looking at her chart i see more and more kind of indicators here that it, it's possible she might choose to go with the non-presidential plan. Uh, we've got Saturn and Neptune both presently retrograde in her 10th house of career and upward mobility and Neptune also rules her 10th house of career and upward mobility. And this can often show up for a person who isn't necessarily uh, trying to hold on to the line of work or the path that they have. Uh, and, and in many cases, what they tend to do um, is they find opportunities to switch to something that it, it aligns with them a little bit more perfectly. So. I'm, I'm not convinced that this is going to go all the way. Um, it, it's possible that she might, uh, but I, I'm kind of wondering if maybe she herself decides to either take her endorsement and pass it on to another person, right? Just kind of pay it forward to a different candidate, uh, maybe offering to be a VP for them or uh, maybe even just endorse another pair, uh, another presidential and uh, VP candidate, uh, and you know instead, that could be what comes out of this situation. Because typically with Saturn retrograde and Neptune retrograde in, in the in the tenth house, what we see is a person uh, getting opportunities to walk away from restrictive conditions and kind of create for themselves. Uh, a career path that is is more in alignment with what they want and who they are. And this full moon that occurred in Capricorn occurred in her eighth house of shared responsibilities, shared resources. And this can also be an area of the chart that talks about other people's affairs and even partners, be they uh, business partners or romantic partners in terms of what we share with them, whether it's business, career, and jobs, or space, money, and resources, and so on. So it's obvious her business partner, so to speak, her running mate, has dropped out. 
So that clearly indicates, you know, again, the full moon in the eighth house makes sense. But this full moon on top of Pluto, which is the ruler of her sixth house of work, reputation, schedule, lifestyle, health, and how she organizes her world, I think has perhaps also called for her to end something that is overdue for an end. Uh, a transition that has been, you know, again, overdue for some time. The moon in her chart also rules her second house of income, employment, and security. So I, I kind of feel like maybe um, she could have at some point maybe set up a, a contingency plan, you know, should she have not been the vice president uh, for another term to take on a different path, a different career, a different road. And I think um, it, it's very possible she, whether or not she does anything with this endorsement, uh, I think it's very possible she may choose to still hold on to that plan and, and just let this go. I've seen this happen with people in their astrology charts where they, um, they kind of set up a life away from an original plan, a five-year plan, a 10-year plan, you know, say like some, I, I had a client once who uh, they were fixing to flip a house that they uh, that they had bought, but the house was already kind of showing signs of never really being complete, but they had already gone as far as they needed to go, and they had this other life waiting for them, so they just kind of sold the house and moved on. Um, and, you know, they did okay, and they, they were able to go on a path and live a life that was more in alignment with them. That's what I really see as a more distinct possibility uh, with Kamala here as far as this goes it's kind of like at first i was curious like well you know is this something she could win is this something she could win and i'm kind of looking at this and i'm like i don't even know if she's gonna go there um could she win if she went there i would have to do a chart for the time when she actually decides to take the bid and run for it uh, but at this point it's looking more like she might not even do that so we'll see we are still very much in the Mars-Uranus conjunction window. And so, you know, we've got many weeks left before the end of August 2024. We'll see what happens. So that is what I've got for you all. I hope you found this helpful. And if you did, don't forget my name is Nico, son of Celine. And should you ever want to get a session with me, you can go on ahead to my website, integrativemysticism.com. And don't forget to check out your monthly astrological forecast for August. And if you enjoy weekly astrological updates, and tarot, you might want to check out the weeklies as well. Y'all take care, and I'll see y'all again soon.